I'm Inezalea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create a nice, unique lens flare in Adobe After Effects completely in After Effects without any external plugins with some great results. So right here I have a lens flare that I made myself and it's completely designed to actually work um, yeah, like this, you have all the control settings that I customized right here. We actually sell this lens flare with the link in the description. You also get a discount code, it's also in the description. If you're coming from this video, you can use that discount code uh, to buy the lens flare pack. So right here, it's a composition that you can import. I have a video on it if you want to see that. Uh, I go over all the features of the lens uh, flare right here. You can also customize the colors right here very easily. Um, but we're going to take a look today on how I actually went on creating this not completely into detail because it took a lot of time to actually make it um, But I will go over some basic features to get a nice looking lens flare in uh, Adobe After Effects right here We have a, a pretty nice looking lens flare. Of course, we have to give it some more contrast right here And there we go looking pretty badass. Okay, so we're going to see how to create something similar looking um, but of course I won't be going over all the menus right here so you can change everything afterwards so yeah let's get started i'll create a new composition and make it full hd or whatever resolution you want i will re rename this to lens flare comp and make it around yeah, 10 seconds long click ok here i have my composition i will create a new solid layer and i will make this black it's important that you make it black and mm, rename this to lens flare here I will go to Effect Generate and I will generate a lens flare and you can see this is uh, already looking pretty nice. You have a lens flare that you can use on your videos. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. Okay, so we have our lens flare, of course, this looks terrible. We're, we're going to change the lens type right here to 105mm uh, prime. That's going to make it look better immediately. Of course, we can also lower the brightness a little bit or play um, with the contrast right here to so affect color correction, curves, and maybe add some contrast. And there we go. Okay, so we have our flare, our basic flare. We're going to position it maybe right over here. And now what I will do is actually, I will make it blue. So I will uh, go into my curves and go to the blue channel and maybe push it right here. Or we can actually make it orange with some blue contrast in there. So that might also look pretty nice. We're going to add some reds and then the blue, I'm going to lower it like so. Now for the green channel, we're going to add a little S curve like this. And what's that? What that's going to do is it's going to add some contrast in the colors. You can see it's more yellow here, more purple right over here. So you can play with that as well. Uh, getting some really nice results. Of course, you shouldn't exaggerate things here. Uh, maybe go back to the blue and play a little bit more there. So just see what works and what doesn't. So it's really playing around, but you can do some really cool things right here. Okay, so let's say that we like this one here. So we're going to use this kind of color. Now what we want to do is actually add a new solid layer and I will pick a color like a dark nice blue color and click OK. And okay. Also in the project settings I'm currently working in 32 bits per channel and this is going to allow me to add some more, well, uh, see more color data and also I'm working in a linearized workspace and so that's why you're going to see uh, some kind of different results in my composition so um, definitely check out how to work with linearized workspace because it's really important in the visual effects industry and yeah you just get more realistic color so uh, just uh, yeah, check it out, work with it for now. I'm also using the sRGB color workspace here so okay so I have my solid layer I will just unselect this for now and right here I will pick my pen tool and just draw something like so so I will start over here um, maybe click over here and then drag it all out here make kind of a square well make something like this and then we can enable this and what we want to do here is go in the F uh, for the feather of the mask and just increase this uh, enough. So I'm also going to change the mode to screen or add, uh, but we can use screen for now. Okay. And just feather it enough like so. And then I will duplicate the same layer. And here I will go in these points and just make them shorter so they're smaller together. Again, press F on the keyboard and lower the feather. So you're going to notice something that it's kind of giving this kind of uh, transition right here it's it's with harder edges and it might look a lot better and also try for a mode add if you want that's going to be a little bit brighter but in a linearized workspace screen works best i think uh, well that's my opinion so 
Um, I'm going to duplicate once more and then press F on the keyboard and lower it even more. And now we have a nice, uh, nice thin line here, like so. Maybe add something like thin uh, feather. And I'm going to change the color or we can actually keep it the same or make it maybe a little bit more cyan. Okay. And now, of course, this doesn't look so good. So what we are going to do is click on our first layer, press T on the keyboard, and just lower that opacity. So we just want kind of a, a glimpse of that uh, blue color. So we don't want to see too much. Something like this works best, I, I guess. Then press F on the keyboard and, uh, well, T on the keyboard for the second layer right here. Also lower the opacity until you get something that you're comfortable with. And then for the first layer, I want to click here on the rectangle, uh, rectangle tool and I will draw a mask like so on here. And then I will also make it inter uh, intersect. And now we only have like um, the small part in the center. And if we click on that layer, press F on the keyboard, we can also feather this out by, yeah, much more. Now you get something like this. So that looks pretty good. Maybe you want to make it a little bit thicker here in the center. So you can definitely play around. Um, yeah, so you can definitely play with that. Uh, check it out. You can also go and add more points here at the end or maybe make them longer. And that way you get something like this. You can also play with the opacity here. Maybe make it a little bit more subtle. And for the lens flare itself, um, of course, the position isn't really centered. So maybe a little bit more like this. And I'm going to the RGB colors here, the workspace for the uh, lens flare. I'm going to make it brighter right here. Okay. I'm also going to add an effect called color correction tint. So it's black and white. And then I will lower this value right here so we don't have that exaggerated color saturation in there. In there. So we get something more like this. And I'm also going to lower the brightness of my lens flare. Okay, so that's looking pretty nice. I'm going to select all of these layers, press T on the keyboard. Um, so we only can change the opacity and just make it softer like so. And there we go. So now we have a custom kind of lens flare. You can also add an effect called an effect blur and sharpen and sharp mask right here. And then just sharpen it um, and also increase the radius a little bit. And that way you will get some more kind of popping effects. Of course, it's way too much. So keep it very subtle. And there we go. What I also like to do is actually before I apply my colors, and this is just a personal preference, so that's why I didn't do it right now. Um, but I make it black and white, and then I apply my colors right here, so um, these aren't playing too much in different kind of tones. Really depends on whatever you're trying to achieve. I'm going to create a new solid layer and I'll make this black and I will rename this to background. So just if we want to add something later on, we can apply this background and make this sh uh, screen as well, because that's actually the point of the lens flare to actually be on top of things. So um, I'm just going to do that and prepare this uh, so we can use it on footage. Then what I want to do is add some kind of spikes right here that you see a lot on lens flare. So what I'll do is create a new solid layer and I'll make this, uh, well, black is okay. And spikes, I'm going to rename it spikes, click OK, put it on top of everything. And then I'm going to apply an effect called, actually, I want to apply the circle first. And there we go. So we have a circle right here and let's make it OK. Let's uh, let's say it's OK here for it to be white. And then we want to add some noise, turbulent noise. And there we go. We add this to our scene here. We want to put the circle below it and then we're going to blending mode and we're going to change this to stencil alpha. And what that's going to do, it's going to allow this effect to only come through, um, through the, the circle right here. So we can go into the feather of our circle, maybe feather it out a little bit like so, and then increase the contrast for our turbulent noise. You can also go into the transform of the turbulent noise and add something like 10 or well, this might be a little bit too low. Just lower the scale right here and also the brightness so we get some kind of points like so. And then we can also decrease the radius of our uh, of our circle. Okay. Okay, once you have that, we can search for for CC radial fast blur. And I'm going to apply this to the spikes as well. And right here in the zoom, I will change this to brightest. So it's only going to look at the white parts. Of course, increase the amount right here. 
we can put the center actually um, what I will do is hold alt and click on the center and drag it to the circle center right here on the circle okay now if we're going to position the circle here we're going to get the center of our radial fast blur in the same center so and that's why I'm doing this okay so we have our circle right here let's say so what I will do is go into the lens flares, pick the curves, copy them, control C, go to the spikes, control V, that's going to add color to our spikes. And if we're going to see uh, something like this, uh, it's giving some weird tones and that's because we're working with the feather of our circle right here to our turbulent noise, but it's going into a transparent background. So if we are going to solo this, we have no background whatsoever. So that's going to give us some kind of weird artifact. So what I, will like, to, uh, what I like to do is search for solid composite and apply this before our circle or actually off <laughs> after our circle and I'm going to change the color to black so what that will do is change everything to actually have a background if we're going to use a blending mode then it's going to look a lot better so without solid composite and with solid composite so it looks a lot better with of course so uh, definitely add that as well and change the radius a little bit more from the circle and maybe add some well actually the contrast is good for the turbulent noise just want to add a little bit more here into the radial and also for the RGB I'm going to add more highlights here okay looking pretty nice okay so let's see without spikes with the spikes so that definitely adds up to your lens flare can do some really cool things with that as well I think this is kind of well um, this is not centered yet so I'm going to reposition this right here same goes for this one should actually reposition everything in the center of our come on it's like complete mask okay make sure that everything is nice and centered and there we go so what I will do now is click on one of these layers go to the anchor point and change the anchor point to the center of our layer like so do the same for all of these And now we're going to start binding everything together. So if we move our flare, everything is actually going to follow along. So go into the lens flare, toggle that open and go into the effects, go into the lens flare itself. And right here we have the flare center. So we need to combine everything with the flare center. So we're going to press P on the keyboard for one of these layers and hold Alt and click on the stopwatch and then bind it with the center of the flare. Click OK. That's not going to do anything because it's currently in the same position. Press P again for this one, I'll click and drag it to the flare center. And that way you can combine everything together. So do it one more time. Well actually you need to do it once more here. And in the spikes I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to look at, um, well actually I just want to combine the center of the circle right here. So I'm going to alt click on the center and I'm going to parent it with the lens flare center. Okay. One problem though, if we're going to work with the spikes, so currently it's going to work, but these spikes are not going to work because the turbulent noise is just like a projection on our entire solid. So if the circle moves, it's going to also move in the turbulent noise. Let me give you an example. If we go into the lens flare, let's move it around. You can see that our turbulent noise is animating all the time because we're actually going through a different pattern of our turbulent noise and we actually want it to keep consistent so go back to the spikes and we also want to combine the transform offset turbulence with uh, the center of our circle so alt click on the turbulent noise and just pick with uh, the center of our circle and that's going to keep it everything the same so if we're going to move it around now actually click on the lens flare and move around you can see that currently um, our turbulent noise goes with it so now we have nice spikes like so and there we go we have our flare so it's looking pretty nice of course right here it's uh, cut off so we will have to fix that and go back into this, this solid maybe and uh, let's make this longer so go uh, click on this layer go into layer se settings solid layer click on this layer go to layer solid settings and we're going to make it a little bit wider so maybe uh, 500 and then press M on the keyboard click on this uh, if you don't see your mask you can actually uh, play with this a little bit and let's solo this 
it's actually working on this wrong one. Okay, I think it's this one as well, so we'll have to make this solidly uh, longer as well. So make sure you, you just um, do this up front, but you can still fix it if you want to. So I'll make it something like 3000 wide and just shorten it like so. Okay, this should work and now it shouldn't be cut off. So let's go to our lens flare and move it around. Okay, looking pretty nice. Yeah, still lower the opacities right here, but it's going to look differently on uh, real footage. So let me add some footage. And that's actually the technique that I used for my short film here from uh, Harry Potter. Well, it's inspired on that movie, um, on Fantastic Beasts, and uh, right here. And that's how I've done it actually. So it's also covering how I've did how, how I've done the wand. So go into the effects, the flare, and put it on the wand. Well. And there we go. We have it on our footage. Maybe brighten it up a little bit. And go into the blues, press T and increase the opacity here a little bit. I actually want them to be a little bit wider so we can click on all of these and make them a little bit longer. And that's looking pretty cool actually. I like this one. Okay. Um, let's add a glow. I will use the perfect glow, which you can also download on our website at the freebies page. So it's uh, free to download and I'll apply this to an adjustment layer actually. So um, I'm going to create a, well actually I'm just going to apply it to um, my lens flare itself. So I'm going to apply the perfect glow here. Okay. And I'm going to make the radius longer. Okay, I like it. Okay, so there we go. We have our nice flare. Add some glow, of course. This might be a little bit too much, but I kind of like the exaggeration, but uh, you get the idea, of course. So you can also go in here and maybe add like only orange tones. Like so. And there we go. So without the glow and with the glow, that's looking a lot better. And of course you can go into your footage and like duplicate it and add a screen here. Mask out my face a little bit and this part. Like so, press F on the keyboard, feather it up a little bit and then go into the uh, effects color correction curves and add some red tones to make it like there is reflection of that flare on my face. A little bit more contrast and that's uh, going to add some reflection and there we go so yeah that's basically how I've created my own lens flare in After Effects without the use of any plugins it's looking pretty great it's kind of like the anamorphic feel that you have right here if you can come up with a nice lens flare definitely comment it below I would love to see what you can come up with using this tutorial and apart from that I hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a like and also subscribe to the channel for more thank you so much for watching and goodbye